We do have some earnings this week. Let's get ready. What better way to prepare than the chart master team? Rick Ducat and Renita Young. We got Lowe's, Dick's Sporting Goods. Let's start with Lowe's, which has been kind of settling back in after doing so well in the first half of the year. Good way to put it, because inflation has ticked up just a little bit, and that's kept people who were looking for a house maybe on the sidelines trying to wait. However, as the housing market usually does, it'll end up people getting in in some point, hoping that rates don't rise as much. And that's been impacting Lowe's obviously because it's tied to the housing industry. But when we look at earnings, they're expected to be adjusted earnings of $4.49 a share on revenue of $24.94 billion in the quarter. And sentiment on the overall has been pretty mixed for home builders. The home builders sentiments index fell for the first time in eight months last week. However, foot traffic has been showing resilience for lows and new home sales are also helping drive that new home sales rather than home improvements. But home improvements is an area that Lowe's is likely to benefit from if it comes through as strong in the second half of the year as people think it will. The expectations definitely still elevated here for sure as these companies do catch that kind of second wind of the housing trade and the improvement category, uh, settling in maybe to an area we're familiar with on the chart, right? Yeah, uh, tra traveling upward since our last earnings event into the yearly highs near 237, down about 8% from that point. And the move has taken us below our two shorter term moving averages we follow, our yellow 21 day, orange 63 day exponential moving averages. We also slip below this volume node right here. So, uh, you know, kind of some, a little bit of technical damage done to the chart here, but not anything catastrophic by any means. Mm. 215 is an important level to watch, I think, this green dashed line, because that's about where we topped out in terms of closing prices several times here. We did have a little bit of an excursion upward there, but we uh, it didn't last. We, we came back down rather quickly there. So 215 also roughly lines up with another volume node right here as well. So uh, that would be a support level to the downside. To the upside, we've got our 63-day EMA near 220, uh, 221 or so. And look out because we've got a little bit of bullish divergence in the RSI. Mm. Price is trending lower. RSI is trending upward here. So a bit of a mismatch. Would be nice for that RSI to continue its bounce right when we settle into that 215 support. That would kind of be the ideal outcome, it seems, for bulls to not go below that line around 215. So... Uh, we'll see if they can hold on to it. Not bad uh, chart so far. I mean, it just pulled back a little bit from the highs. The exporting goods, big, big winner for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as we head into uh, the seasonality element, you know, summer transitioning to fall, I do kind of wonder if maybe they might lose a tiny bit of momentum. Maybe, but it's still relatively positive sentiment on this stock. And the analysts, they do note that seasonality could play into it, the macro conditions could play into it. But this stock has been an outperformer in its industry for a while now. Dix is continuing to gain market share. This analyst, or several analysts rather, say that it should continue to do so over the long term. So analysts expect adjusted earnings of $3.75 a share on revenue of $3.2 billion. And ahead of this, a couple analysts actually raised their price targets on the stock. UBS is one of them, raising it to $160 a share from $150. Maintained a neutral rating, however, and others have more bullish ratings on this. Uh, but on a whole, they say that industries, this industry has remained pretty stable. This particular company has been a outperformer in the industry, and the company expects it to continue to outperform. So much uh, momentum generally, it seems like, of the long-term chart working here, uh, Rick. Every time it pulls back, it finds some buyers. Yeah, but you said losing momentum earlier. Yeah. I think if I could sum up this chart with one phrase in the short term, that would be it, losing mm. momentum here okay. because we're trailing off a little bit as we head into these highs. We had this downward sloping trend line going across the highs. We also had this horizontal level marking our best close at 149.73. We failed to take out both of those levels here. Uh, we, we were a little bit above our trend line, but we've retreated back below it here. Also seeing some bearish divergence on the RSI. Price was trending upward. RSI was trending down, suggesting momentum is slowing as we approach this resistance. So around 150 would be the mark to beat to the upside. To the downside, look for support right around here at our 21-day EMA near 142.60. Okay, so interesting kind of 
you know, uh, compression happening in mm -hmm. this chart uh, right around that 140-ish uh, level or so. All right, we'll watch uh, earnings for both these. It does kind of seem like maybe the bulls have a little support showing up for lows. Dick Sporting Goods kind of the pressure on to continue the upside momentum. Thanks, Renita. And Rick, uh, analysts generally still pretty optimistic, though, on two different versions of the consumer.